Welcome back to the Age of Jeremy YouTube channel. My name is Jeremy Quintanilla. I am the co-founder and chief executive officer for uh, Age of Radio. You can check it out at ageofradio.org. I'm also the co-founder and chief financial officer for 3T Warrior Academy. You can check that out at 3TWarriorAcademy.com. And links to each of those websites is in the episode description. So please check them out. But I don't really want to talk about them today. What I want to talk about is this book here, The Hojin Murders by Saishi Ayoko Mizo. And the reason why I'm doing that is if you had watched my previous video, it's a book haul video. I do apologize for the video content. I am learning as I go, and these will continue to get better, I hope. And in many, many years, we'll be able to look back at this and be like, man, that content, or I guess that quality of those videos got better. Content's always amazing, right? And so um, the reason why I do, did that book haul was because I wanted to show people how I set my reading goals. I wanted to have something to help hold me accountable to my reading goals. And then I also wanted to share books with you that I think that you should be reading. I think a lot of the times we focus too much on personal finance books that we should be reading or motivational books. And um, there's lots of insight that can be taken from works of literary art or from biographies of people. And so that's why I'm doing this so I can share this with you so that maybe you can get some insight from it and learn from it or find some new books. That being said, I want to let you know that I'm not saying that you should just only read. I think that if you have a difficulty time reading, maybe you don't know how to read, maybe you can't sit for long periods of time, maybe you just don't have the time to read, Audible books are a great way to do that. We're not sponsored by Audible, but uh, you can go check audible.com. There's lots of books that are available in Audible format or audio format. Um, and you can also find those on Amazon. If you have a way to buy them at your audio books at your local bookstore, I would do that more than doing Amazon. But um, to each their own. So I wanted to talk about the Hojin murders. <clears throat> now, the Hojin murders is written by a gentleman named Saishi Yoko Mizo. And Saishi Yoko Mizo lived between 1902 and 1981. He was one of Japan's most famous and best loved mystery writers. He was born in Kobe and spent his child reading detective stories before beginning to write stories of his own, the first of which was published in 1921. He went on to become an extremely prolific and popular author, best known for his Kasuki Kendaichi series, which ran for 77 books and selling more than 55 million copies and spawning many stage and television adaptations. The Hojin Murders is the first Kasuki Kendaichi story and regarded as one of the Japan's greatest mystery novels. And the reason why it is probably one of Japan's most greatest mystery novels is because that this is a closed room murder case. If you don't read murder mystery books, a lot of murder mystery authors try to do what's called a closed book murder, or a closed room murder, sorry, closed room murder. Uh, It'd be really difficult to, I guess, I guess you could have a closed book murder in some fashion, but in this case, we're talking about closed room murders. So a closed room murder is that you have a room and there's a murder that takes place inside of it, and no one knows how that person got into the room or how they got out of the room to commit that specific murder. And it's something that a lot of murder mystery, if not all murder mystery writers, try to tackle, and that's why I got excited about reading this book, but then it turned me on to the, the Kasuki Kendaichi series, and then I bought all of the Kasuki Kendaichi books. And uh, I want to give a big shout out to Pushkin Vertigo. Go check out Pushkin Vertigo. They are a mystery publishing company, and they are bringing these to English for the first time. And so there's three of them that are available now, and I have them all part of my book haul, and the fourth one I have on pre-order from Amazon. So I'm going to put a link to Pushkin Vertigo and to buy this book here on um, Amazon, and those links will be in the description below. But let's talk a little bit about the Honjin murders. So in the winter of 1937, the village of Okamura is abuzz with excitement over the forthcoming Ichiyanagi wedding. But amid all of the gossip, there is also a worrying rumor. It seems a sinister masked man has been asking questions around the village. Then on the night of the wedding, the Ichiyanagi household are woken by a terrible scream, followed by the sound of eerie music. Death has come to Okamura leaving no trace but a bloody samurai sword thrust into the pristine snow outside of the house. Soon, amateur detective Kasuki Kendaichi is on the scene to investigate what will become a legendary murder case. But can this scruffy sleuth solve a seemingly impossible crime? So, let's talk about that. I'm not going to give you any spoilers. But, so essentially, the Ichiyanagi family is a wealthy family. They're, you know, a prominent family in Okamura. And so the the, the um, bride and 
group, which I forgot their names because I read this months ago, um, so probably should have looked that up. But the bride and groom, they get murdered on the night of their wedding. Um, and so, uh, so the uncle of the bride is there at the wedding. He had helped a young man, Kasuki Kendaichi, kind of get his footing in life and becoming a detective. So they have a good relationship. So Kazuki Kandaichi comes to the town to solve this murder because the police don't really know what's going on and uh, they need kind of like a better mind to solve it because it's so confusing how this murder took place without anybody being able to get in or get out or at least seem like they weren't able to get in and get out. And so Kasuki Kandaichi is really fun because he, I wouldn't say that he's arrogant, but he's just confident in what he believes happened, and he's very logical about it. So that's the first thing. Secondly, he has a weird sense of humor that I don't think other people get, and or at least in the book get. I think you would get it if you read it, because it's kind of humorous. Um, and he doesn't really care about what people kind of think of him. Um, he he's very reminds me of very much like a, maybe a Johnny e. Lee Miller, Sherlock Holmes, um, or a Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, Sherlock Holmes, um, in that sense. But I don't think he, he's not really actually arrogant. I think he just does what he does because he's confident in himself and being able to solve this. So that, that's very interesting to watch that dynamic. The other thing that's really interesting about this book is the pace. A lot of stuff has to take place in a small amount of time. It's only 187 pages. So inside of that 187 pages, pages, you get introduced to this sinister man that's asking questions about the Ichiyanagi family, and then you start, uh, then you meet most of the Ichiyanagi family, and their, their backstories all take place in this, and you start finding out about all of these secrets that have taken place with the Ichiyanagi family, and why this sinister man might be looking for them, because he is the main suspect into this crime. And so, that what's interesting is it takes so many twists and turns, that even when you think that you have it figured out, something else happens, and what's interesting about the something else that happens that leads you to start believing that it might be someone else as opposed to a different person is that it's explained so well that you're like, oh, I didn't even think about that. But now that you explained it to me, that actually makes sense. And that's one of the reasons why I liked this book. Um, and so, so I would definitely make sure that you pick this up. I have a link in the description below. Um, it's not going to take you very long to read. It's only 187 pages. Um, the next one that came out, I don't think I actually did it in order, but it's the uh, Inugami Curse. I have that one. I'm going to be reading it soon. Right now I'm finishing up Middle March by George Eliot, and then I'll talk a little bit about that. And again, I don't want to go into uh, everything that happens in the book, right? I just want to talk about kind of the the themes or concepts of the book without giving too much away, so it encourages you to go read it. Um, so again, murder mystery, close room murder mystery, the way that he solves it is fantastic. You will never see it coming, or at least I didn't see it coming. Maybe you're a big murder mystery reader and you have that stuff all figured out. I do not, but I love puzzles and I loved reading it. So go pick it up. Um, here it's $14.95 uh, US or $19.95 Canada, UK it's $8.99. Um, so you can get it in an English-speaking country, I guess, or at least those main English-speaking countries. Um, so, so go check it out and be thankful, grateful, and kind, uh, and we'll see you next time. Bye.